Hi everyone, Bria here from Etched Actuarial, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking all about exam day. So I'm going to be talking about what you should expect and what you should bring to the exam to make sure that you have everything you need. So if you're writing the exam soon, exam P or FM, give this video a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, go sign up for my exam P and FM study strategy tips and advice emails. I'll leave a link in the description below, so pause the video right now and go get those. I'm waiting. Okay, now let's get into the video. Okay, so exam day can be a little bit different for everyone because all the Prometric testing centers are a little bit unique. They have a slightly different process. They're set up a bit different. So I'm gonna to talk to you specifically about how it was for me on my CBT exams because, well, I wrote in Hamilton, Ontario, which is in Canada. So if you're writing there, you're definitely going to have a good experience. Everything always went really smoothly there, um, as it does with most testing centers. But in particular, I've always had a great experience in Hamilton, so definitely go there if you can. But my experience might be a little bit different than yours, but overall, I think it'll be fairly similar. So what happens is when you get there, you're going to be greeted by a receptionist or an administrative person or whatever, um, and they are going to take your ID and your name and then they'll pretty much key everything into the computer. They'll, they'll use a whole bunch of information that they need from your ID, probably your address, your first and last name, uh, gender, anything else that they really need from that and then they'll get you to do a fingerprint probably. So they'll just take your finger, your thumb and they'll scan it and then they have that on their computer screen. Um, a few times I've actually been, like they waved a metal detector over me, which only happened a few times. I'm not really sure why it seems kind of random that they do that, but it could happen to you as well. So. Yeah, once you get that process done, you're actually signed in to the exam and you have to go right. So if you arrive to the exam center early, half an hour early or 45 minutes early or something, and you just want some time to review your materials and relax and everything, well, then don't go through this whole sign up uh, procedure because once you do that, you have to go right. They won't let you sit there and just review your notes. So that's just something to be, uh, just something to know about because I have heard of people trying to do that. They wanted to just take some time and relax and everything before the exam, but they already did the sign in process, so they weren't actually able to. Okay, so once you're signed in, you're going to put all of your belongings into a locker and that'll have a key. And that key is the only thing other than your ID that you can actually take into the exam room with you. Now I'm talking about CBT exams right now. I'll talk a little bit about paper and pencil exams in a bit, but for CBT exams, you can only take in your key from the locker and your ID. So that means you don't need to bring pencils or anything. Oh, sorry, and your calculators. You're definitely going to need those too. But you don't need pen pencils or erasers or anything that's all provided by the testing center and you cannot bring any water or anything like that in either so you can basically have three things in your hands and that is all that you can bring in okay so once you have done all that then you're going to be shown your computer and the person won't really talk to you much because it's a very quiet testing environment there might be, at least in Hamilton, there were probably 10 or 12 computers there and there is always already a few people there testing. They aren't necessarily writing the same exam as you, so don't, don't be concerned that you might see their answers or anything like that. They're probably writing other exams. Um, yeah, so the majority of the orientation and everything will be actually on the computer. So once you get on your computer, you're going to have 15 minutes to go through the orientation. And that will just tell you all the details about the exam. It'll tell you which buttons to click and just general, the whole general process and everything that you'll need to know about uh, taking the exam on the computer. 
And once that 15 minutes is up, by the way, you don't have to take the whole 15 minutes. It definitely doesn't take that long to go through it, but they give you lots of extra time just in case you need it. So yeah, once the 15 minutes is up, then you'll be prompted to start your exam. So you obviously get three hours for your exam. I'm not going to go through the formatting and everything of the exam and how everything is set up, like the computer layout and how the questions are asked and everything like that. If you're interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description below uh, to an article I wrote about just everything you can expect about the formatting of the exam. So if you want to know about that, go check out that video. But anyway, the exam lasts three hours. and. 15 minutes before your exam is done, you'll get a little pop-up notification on your computer screen that tells you there's only 15 minutes left. There is a timer in the corner that you can look at the time whenever you want, but the 15 minute pop-up, just make sure that you're very aware that there are only 15 minutes left. And then the exam will be over. Next, you'll be prompted to fill out a questionnaire. And that questionnaire is going to ask you just about your overall testing experience. They'll ask you about the exam center and whether you had any issues and stuff like that. They will ask you about how well you think the syllabus was covered in the test and the difficulty of the test, in your opinion. Just a whole bunch of questions about that sort of thing. And then, once that is done, is when you'll get your result. So a lot, of, a lot of the time I usually just speed through that questionnaire because I don't really care about answering it, but probably not the best thing to do, but I really wanted to see my results. So I would just go through that questionnaire really quickly and then be able to see my result. So yeah, you get your result there. And then once that's done, you can get up, you'll go out to back to the receptionist or the proctor and she will be able to give you your paper that has the same result on it with an official SOA stamp and you are going to be good to go. So then your exam day is done and you can go home and relax and do whatever you have been wanting to do for the last three or four months. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to go through some things that you're going to want to bring on exam day. So, oh, sorry, I said I would talk a, a little bit about the procedure for paper and pencil exams. So this isn't a whole lot different, um, but on a paper and pencil exam, everyone is starting at the same time. So there's going to be a lineup of other people there when you arrive uh, waiting to get in. With the CBT exams, all the start times are staggered. So there's usually only one or two people there waiting to get in at a time because the start times are just all different. But when you're writing paper and pencil, everyone starts at the same time, so everyone has to get signed in. You'll line up at a desk where they will uh, reset your, comp your calculators. Actually, they'll do that on CBT exams too. I forgot to mention it, but they will reset your calculator. So make sure you have been able to figure out how to get back to the settings that you want for your calculators. Um, they'll take your ID and your acknowledgement letter on the paper and pencil exam and then you'll be shown your desk and you will just wait for everyone else to get in. Now just one thing to know is that paper and pencil exams almost never start on time. I've never had an exam that starts when it said it was going to. Usually they just start talking around the time when it's supposed to start. So they'll go through a whole bunch of information there and at the beginning it takes about 15 to 20 minutes and then you'll start the exam. So it's, it's not a big deal, you'll still get your three hours, but just, just so you know, you're probably not gonna start on time and the exam will probably end up going later than you had planned. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all for paper and pencil exams. It's, it's very similar. It's just that there's a, a bit of a different process. Okay, now I'm gonna go into what things you need to bring on exam day. So just like for the exam experience, you're going to need to bring different things depending on whether you're writing a CBT exam or a paper and pencil exam. For CBT, all you need to bring is your ID, which can be your license or a passport. If you're writing outside of your home country, then you need to bring a passport for sure. But most cases, a license is a good enough ID. If you want to know more about the specifics about these different 
uh, IDs that you can bring. I will link to a post that I recently wrote in the description of this video. You should go check that out for all the details. But your ID has to be in good condition. It can't be bent, it can't be cracked, it can't be tampered with in any way. Make sure you have ID that's in very good condition. And yeah, so ID, um, you need to bring your calculators. If you haven't already picked up calculators, I will also link to the in the description the calculators that I recommend. There's going to be a lot of links in this description. But definitely check out that video so you know the calculators that are best for exam P and FM. And you're going to want to bring a sweater. On exam day, you never know what the temperature of the room is going to be. Sometimes it's freezing, sometimes it's hot, so you just have to come prepared with layers, pretty much, so that you're comfortable and no matter what situation you're in. The one thing, though, that I found kind of frustrating is for CBT exams, if you go in with a sweater, you can't take off your sweater during the exam. I tried to do that once and they said I was not allowed and they made me put it back on. So just something to be cautious about. However you go into the exam is how you have to stay. Okay, so yeah, those are the three things if you're writing a CBT exam, your ID, your calculators, and your sweaters. But if you're writing a paper and pencil exam, there are a few other things you have to bring. So number one is your acknowledgement letter. When you signed up for the exam, you would have got an email from the SOA that said something like, I don't know, Order Confirmation Society of Actuaries, something along those lines. And within that email, you're going to see your acknowledgement letter. So if I were you, I'd just print off the whole thing. You don't want to rely on this being on your phone. You don't know what's going to happen on exam day. Maybe you won't be able to access the internet for some reason. So I suggest just printing it off so you know you have it. You're also going to want to bring multiple pencils, erasers, and a pencil sharpener. Now, a lot of the time they do have backups at the test center for these kind of things, but they're expecting you to bring your own. So you should bring multiple pencils. I usually bring four or five just because I like to switch between them. You'll definitely want to have a good eraser and a pencil sharpener in case you need to sharpen your pencils throughout the exam. And for paper and pencil, you can also bring water into the exam room, which is really nice. Um, no food, though. I mentioned this in another video. For CBT or uh, paper and pencil exams, if you need food or water for those three hours for some medical condition that you may have, then you need to get special authorization from the SOA in order to bring those into the exam room, except for water for paper and pencil that anyone can bring in. Okay, so those are the things that you need to bring. I think I've covered everything. So if you're writing exam P or FM soon, remember to go sign up for those study strategy tips and advice emails because there's lots of good tips in there that you're going to be able to use during your studying and on exam day and just in your overall actuarial career. So give this video a thumbs up if it helped you and I'm wishing you best of luck on your exam. I really hope you pass and if you do, please let me know. I love to hear when people pass their exam. It's really awesome. So yeah, see you in the next video. Bye!